Fasting is not prophecy. Learn. Most of us come around the great man. We don't sit down. We sit the great man down and lecture the great man. And we have nothing to substantiate to what our theory that we are propagating. If you must teach me, show me what you have taught yourself. What does it produce? Papa no sabi dwan. You sabi dwan. Now you be like this. Do you think it is easy to make 100 people go and come back? Hey, go and try it. You young men who have started church, I, God bless you. I encourage you. Keep doing it. After 30 years, your mouth will come down. You can be making on a you are, you are writing what you have not experienced. When life grinds you like pandendiam, pound you very well. You know our local grinding stone. When life grinds you, be your law. When they pound you like a titty pounded yam, when you throw robo robo and become soft, now you go teach yourself humility. Now you are not humble. Let life hit you. Then you will now understand how to talk to great men with gracious tongue. church is quiet. I pray for you. I pray for you. Wealth is coming. Someone say, wealth is coming. Strength is coming. Honor is coming. I say it's coming. I say it's coming. Let's read Ezekiel 37. Please, hear me. May you be teachable. Verse 1, let's read. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me into the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which is full of dry bones. <laughs> you see, it is not your condition that is very important. It is the teacher standing before you. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. You see, your condition can be dry. You might have no money. But the truth is that God brought a hand, carried a prophet, took the pro You see, you did not encounter me by mistake. I don't know where you have your dry bones. Listen to me. Listen to me very well. It was the hand of the Lord that brought me to Abuja. And I came into a valley. It was full of dry bones. Hear me. Hear me. You are better than the dry bones. Now here, it, this is what most of you don't understand. Dry bones don't talk to their teachers. They listen to their teachers. Now I will show you something now. I will show you something. From the teaching aspect. Put verse 2. Put verse 2. And he caused me to pass by around the about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Yes, there are situations around your life that is very dry. Yes, it's true. There is an affliction. There is an adversity that is very dry. In fact, it is true. You know. It could be marital. It could be health. It could be financial. It could be anything. It could be anything. Family. Related. One sin or the other. That you are struggling with. But hear me. It was the hand of God that brought me to you. You are not a dry bone. That's why I started by saying to you. That you are better than the dry bone. But let me tell you what dry bones did to their teacher. How much more you? Put verse 3. Put verse 3. Verse 3. And he said unto me. Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Oh Lord, only thou knowest. Now, I was taught before I came to teach you. I asked me a question. Hear me. There is no ultimate knowledge but the knowledge from above. Yes. Even I, when I encounter your problems, I know as a man it cannot be solved. Now, go home. Go home. And he, again, he said, Unto me, prophesy. Upon these bones, and I say unto them, Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, they were not dead body, 
they were bodies that have been dead and the skins have been taken away. Kanka one, Pama one have eaten them. It was dry bones that I was talking to. I have to teach dry bones. When he said prophesy, he was telling me teach the dry bones. Go forward. Thus says the Lord unto this bone, behold, I will cause bread to enter into you and you shall receive life. He's not telling me to take dry bones. Now, as you are there now, I will cause bread to enter into you and you shall live. The bones were dry. How were they able to hear? How were they able to hear? What the prophet was teaching, prophesying, and saying. If bones can hear word, why you know they hear word? If dry bones can hear, why will you not hear? Read forward. He now begin to tell the dry bones what will become of them. That a great army will come out of them. And they are going to walk together and they will not break ranks and they will clamp war he start telling them what is going to happen but they were in a dry state oh you will say hey, this is just an analogy this is just a description a proverb or whatever oh in john chapter 11 he stood at the grave of lazarus and he spoke to a man that have died for some days he called the name of a dead man and the dead man heard his name and came to life why you know they hear your name ability to hear and to hearken is the product of result it is not every time you should pray hear when you begin to hear you begin to do and when you begin to do the glory will begin to manifest four killers of glory and i'm going to start praying with you anytime you see glory killed i call it sexual perversion where you see sexual sin multiply in an higher ratio glory is killed the glory of the church is taken away because of the multiplication of immorality and immorality can be at any level when you as a woman you dress half naked. Expose all your lap. Expose your upper region. Displaying your malicious mentality. You are sexualizing men. It's immorality. You are gloryless. You have no honor on your virtue. You are telling yourself. That you have been demarked. Some of you ladies. The reason why no man. Want to marry you. You are a universal donor. By your appearance. Men. Like what is sacred. What value have been laid. Upon. Some of you mothers. You are now married. You are dressing your daughters the way it is offensive and provocative. They come to church and when they correct your daughters, you get angry. Shame of you, mother. What is, oh God, what is a 13 year old girl doing with macro skirt? Her pole opening her body, exposing herself. And you don't see anything wrong. And when they correct your daughter, you get angry. It shows the state of your mind, ma'am, mother. It shows the state of your mind. What should be covered should be covered. The advertisement of your sensitive part does not make you beautiful. It makes you idiotic. When I see. 
seen their daughters. I am a pastor. There are things I cannot say. A father, they tried to get battle. You started sleeping with her from 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You have, they tried to have aborted for the father. Shame on you, wicked father. There are men, you cannot keep children close to them. If you keep children close to them, they abuse their daughter, abuse children. What is wrong with you with small, small girls? What are you doing with an eight-year-old girl? What are you doing with a nine-year-old? There are mental disorder in many adults. Shame on you. You are an animal. What life are we in? in? Mothers can entrust their daughters to uncle. A 10 year old girl is already feeling nervous around an uncle. What is going on in the world? You are killing the glory of 18. You mothers, you trust too much. We are in the world that you need to engage your female child and stop entrusting your female children to some animals. You don't know why your daughter does not have respect for her body. She has been abused. Some of the things you see around young girls. Ah, they can't say it. Oh, help the helpless child. The female child had been abused. Raped. Raped. Her self worthness her value have been diminished. She grow up into a society that is full of fear. She see all men as animals because of the barbaric nature of the uncle, of the father, of a useless man that cannot control his sexual appetite. I cannot apologize for the adjective I used to describe you. So many adults with mental disorder. When a man abuses a small boy, when a lady of 21 sleeps with a male child of seven, yes, I'm a pastor. I've seen all manner of, I'm not just preaching. I'm talking about cases I have handled. What a barbaric world. Sexual perversion. Sexual wickedness. Desire of two minutes to destroy a destiny of a baby of a child. They now pay you to go to Dubai. You are sleeping with dogs. Or your boy is snapping you. Videoing you. You think your eye don't open. Your eye don't close. Your destiny don't close. You need deliverance. Am I saying there's no hope for you? I'm, I see they pain you. I want me you change. Church is quiet. The killer of glory. Nothing kills glory. That when a lady reduces herself to an animal. You carry yourself. Four men are sleeping with you. Shame on you. You've reduced yourself to a peanut. What is 100,000, 150,000 to your self-esteem and worthiness. And you men who do this. Your children are in America, in Dubai, and you abuse poor men's daughters. Judgment is coming for you. Yeah. 
And some of the things that happen is as a result of some of the chemicals some of you, some people take. Hard drugs that makes you not to be in your senses. When you take drugs, nicotines, heroines, take drugs, abusing yourself what? Feeling high and behaving upside down. You smoke. Some of you ladies, you smoke. Men, you smoke. You talk out of sense. Pull your clothes. Wear clothes. Display your chest. And when they call you, you say you have six pack. You have 32 pack. Being high for no reason. Disgracing your self worth. Manipulating your mental capacity to be in disorder. Not thinking straight, not thinking right. So, because of what you take, what you should be ashamed of, you are no longer ashamed of it. Even some animals have shame, but what you are taking is stimulating your brain. You no longer understand what is called shame in your dictionary. So some of these activities as a result of hard drugs that some of our daughters, our sons take. Parents, watch your children. They now buy Coca-Cola and put some things inside it to take. I was told in somewhere in, in part of the north, they will go around a place somewhere where people urinate and there are, there are all manner of smelling things. They go there to inhale to get high. What level? What has happened to mankind? Ah, he's coming back. The world is gradually dripping to nothing. A man simply feel like a woman. A woman simply feel like a man. Some ladies are no longer in love with a male. They are chasing female like them. Male chasing male like them. What is happening to our world? We are helping you to talk to your children. You are fighting Osha, fighting Sunday, Sunday school teachers, fighting. The reason is because you don't know. If we don't help, if we don't join you to train your children, your children will train you in old age. Even pastors are already taking certain drugs. When they clamp altar, they talk out of sense. They give testimony that does not exist. And they don't know when they lie. They are under the effect of certain drugs. They talk that even common men cannot say, na lie, na you they lie. But you don't know, you know get shame. It is drug motivated. Yes. Yes. We are in the, it's not something about members. It has entered the altar. It has entered the altar. What a wicked war. What is going on? What is the stimulation? What is the influence? What is the manipulation? I am so worried. I preach out of pain, out of passion. Not because I'm talking. It's because cases have been brought to me in counsel. Everything I mention now. I have sat down with parents, sat down with daughters, sat down with sons, and I see them cry, and I cry with them, and I ask them how it started. Parents, most of us have failed. Church is quiet. One of the cases that touched me, she was describing how she ran to the mother. I was telling the mother how uncle had been abusing her. She's trying to talk. Go, go, go. I'm going to work. I'm going to work. 
she shot her down. Shot her down. That same day again, uncle abused her. How many of our children feel like committing suicide? Oh Lord, help me when it is my father that abused me. Oh Lord, help me when my biological father become the one who disvirgin me. The pains of war. Some of us, I have seen when I, when I was dealing with some ladies who went into prostitution and I was trying to change them. When I heard their story, I broke down into tears. All the women in the whole world, you don't see anyone. It's your daughter from your loins you abused. Your daughter is shouting, Daddy, Daddy. Your animalistic mentality does not make you to think you are sleeping and raping your daughter. Shame on you. Sometimes when we speak truth, it can be offensive, it can hurt. You see me? I've come to a level in my life. I hear truth. If I am wrong, you tell me. I repent. There's nothing I'm looking for again is to live in truth. Tell myself truth. Anytime he takes me home, I'm on truth. No man can take me except it's my time. Anytime I leave this war, nobody killed me. God took me. So don't, nobody should, hey, they, nobody. I know I have a covenant with him. My assignment is to speak truth and to say untruth. You might not value me now, you value me later. We are, in a, we are in a tricky world. Bow cock batty, I hear you are on bow a dog me. I'm all I da, no more da, shining your la. All our roti shellery, your baba conia. I need back
patient. Take us to the place of higher glory. When we become patient. Nobody becomes great without despising shame. Many people are running away from shame, but they want glory. Our shames in life are different. When people use our condition to abuse us, let's leave them. Let them do what they want to say. Ogombo. Glory is coming. If you see me in my glory, don't fight me. Are you able to go through what I've gone through? When I put food in my mouth, don't tell me I don't deserve to eat it. I, I labored for the food I got. Glory don't just come. Some of us want to be part of the testimony, but we don't want to be part of the glory. I want to come. I want to come to La Koja. Be careful how you talk to people. I'm rounding up by telling you, are you a victim of all these things I have mentioned? My sermon must have been hard on you. But there's a hope for you. Am I condemning you? No. I'm only telling you. You can have a departure from that past and come to glory. Even Jesus was crucified naked. Stripped of all his honor. One leg basho here, but one leg bakada right. They can take your garment, but they can't take your star. Are you more? What God have written? Take my coat of many color. You can't take my star on my head. Slow down. I am your pastor. I'm only sent to teach you. I'm not your enemy. You are here. I am to contribute to your life. The things I cannot do. Stop fighting me. I'm not the cause of your problem. I'm sent as a messenger to help you. If your biological father could not solve your problem, I'm only here as an agent of change. If you want to see change, don't put your teacher out of the room. Set your eyes, according to Isaiah 30 verse 20, on your teacher. I got here because I have learned a lot. I preach from experience of life and connect them to reality of the scripture. And that's why my mission is to raise the nobody to become the somebody. Every time you see me talk, I don't talk because I'm creating one story. I talk from the experience of life. The things I've experienced, people with their experience have encountered. But that is something years I've been preaching. I have seen stories. I've left church sometimes get home and cannot eat. Lost appetite. Not because I have trouble, but because of this trouble of somebody I had. I cry all through because of the wickedness of the world. Sometimes I ask myself, Lord, why do you call me into this kind of job? Because some of the things I've encountered in my life and people have encountered in my life, their troubles are very difficult. You don't know why I am so tough the way I am tough and aggressive the way I'm aggressive. All through my life, I am not called to solve small problems. I am encountering difficult puzzles of life. It has wired me the way I am. You know, when I hear some people say, hey, hey, hey Papa, Papa, uh, Papa, over the, over the days, is it because Mama came, Papa had become tough? No. When I got to 2019, I became tougher. Because life taught me so many experiences. I am a product of what life has caused me to become. If you are dealing with me and think I'm inexperienced, you are deceiving yourself. I have seen betrayals. I have seen lies. I've seen pretense. 
I've seen deception in honor. I've seen truth. I've seen true service. I've seen men battered, women battered, children injured. I have seen people broken down with good intention. I've seen gang up. I've seen ungratefulness and seen gratefulness. I've seen people who are broken, who become Judas and return, later on return to become truth. I've seen all in my little way, in my own way. I make my decisions in life based on the Holy Spirit and experience that become an inspiration to me. Be careful. Slow down. Do not be in a hurry to judge people. You have not gotten to their university. When you get to their university, your tongue will be sorted with grace. May you not fail. I see restoration. Glory. Glory is coming. When you get to this higher glory, do you know why some people will not accept you? Won't you ruin me? They've concluded you. Sometimes my tears, sometimes my tears of joy. Because when I see people who thought they have written me off, they cannot come into terms. That is the same person. Yes, you are the same person. God will use your life to prove them wrong. Don't, 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 don't let the glory of another person kill your glory. I ran up on this account to tell you. <laughs> When the sun starts shining, he feels he's the only brother in town. All of a sudden, he gives way for darkness to come. Then brother moon begins to shine. Everybody have their season. Asikoni bobonkon. Asikoni. His Excellency President Ahmed Bola, that most people abuse today, they are now singing his praises. That person you call all manner of things is now his Excellency, including his enemy and his friends. You don't have any, you don't have any option as long as the Constitution has put him there. It's his Excellency. When your time comes, enemies might not like you. They might like you. It is not your cup of tea. He lift up one up and bring one down and take one up. May you get to the place. Where, listen to me. Listen to me. It is not every time you should pray for your enemy to die. If your enemy die, who are they that are going to be surprised about your lifting? Before they die, let them see your glory. After they now cry, they cannot die. This is how I pray. I don't pray for them to die before my glory. Who I will do younger for when they die? I won't do younger for them before they die. So, no, never die. I don't say you they sick. Never die. Never die. How you go die now? See my glory first. When God set me up, then after my going up, come a potential. Now, so you're about to call a potential. You go come hit you, then you can't die. <laughs> Can I prophesy in this 2023? Your enemies will see your glory, your glory will give them my potential in this 2023. Your enemies will see your glory, your glory will give them my potential. In this 2023, your enemies will see your glory. Your glory will give them hypertension. My names are Joshua E. Giller. By the aurora on my head, in this 2023, your enemies will see your glory. Your glory will give them hypertension. They will expire by fire by thunder. Hey! 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 Hey!
Oh. Am I blessing you today? Is it sinking? Please sit down. I might not be able to give the other point. But the second point is wrong association. I talk about sexual perversion. Wrong association. Some people you associate with can diminish your glory. Should you not love everybody, you love everybody, but you don't give people rights to, rights to your life. Relationship sometimes is the life wire of life. And if you relate with toxic relationship, it will destroy you. Enemies of glory. Inferiority complex. The complex that makes you feel that you are nothing. While you stand in the midst of the, your equals. And you are better than them. But you are timid. You are not able to speak with audacity. The body of Christ is gradually saying that. Nobody owns monopoly of God. Nobody have right to diminish another man's work. In the name of revelation doctrines and myopic interpretations of scriptures. We see from our own perspective and interpret scripture from different pers perspective. A perception about God is personal revelation. Interpret the scripture according to your level of understanding. Or you have no right to judge another man's work. We are gradually Imagine out of this monopolistic mentality of spirituality, egoism, and holier than thou mentality. Nobody have right to diminish another man's star. The days of calling one person demon and you are right, they are gradually fading away. And do you know why? Because even the people trying to do that are seeing their level of failure. Man is man. And it is not given to any man to judge any creature or creation that God has created. You didn't die for. You did not die for us. So when you judge another man's work, we will sit down here to tell you your errors too. The days of self-pride. Speaking with two-sided mouth. Clickship. Earlier than thou attitudes, superiority complex, high mindedness, spiritual madness, insanity that should be sanitized. They are all over now. Face your work, judge yourself, and live another man's work. No denomination have another right to demonize another denomination. Our duty is to preach Christ. Christ alone. You don't have any right to judge another man's work. You might not like their doctrines and like their activity. Face your work. God gave to us revelations from different perspectives. Higher glory. Higher glory. Yeah. How many of you hear the team? Not glory. Higher. O go ju o go law. O go to ju o go law. Nyo lor ma fun eh. Oh mo. Ti a wong lo go back page When men with glory, when they sit down, they now look at your glory. I will go want to sorrow, go to do go long. That's what I'm talking about. Men who carry glory. I'm talking about another man who carry glory because glory is above glory. It's called higher glory. That's where you are going to. That's your prophecy for today. Oh, go to do go long. Oh, Lord, be with me. 
I say glory that is above glory. Lord, drop it on me. You see, let me round up by saying this last word. It is at this level of glory. You become an authority. Keys have been given. Keys, plural, have been given to you. One day I was praying. And I said, Lord, come and fight my battle for me. And the Lord said, what is the sword in your hand for? And God showed me something and I will tell you and we pray. It's the last level of revelation. He said to me, when there was war in heaven, when Lucifer tried to take over, I sat on my throne and I sent Michael, the archangel, to fight the battle in heaven. What makes you think I will come down to fight when I did not fight that time? Say there are ministering angels that fight. It is an improper fraction for me to come down and fight Lucifer that was degraded. It's a level of revelation. Eh? I didn't fight him. I sent angel to fight him. When I say whatever you bind on earth shall be bind in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose. And I gave you authority. It is because I want to yearize the devil. That you are the fighter. If you don't speak. You are, you are, it is an error. You are making me look small. It is like calling a 50 year old child. Man to go and fight a two month old baby. Do you want me to kill him overnight? You are his level. If I come down to that level. They are, that's why power was invested on you. To fight. Some of you, you have the sword. You are not fighting. Come down and manifest. Where is God coming down? It's already in you. No, it's a level of revelation. It's not for everybody. Is God not inside you? Is it the devil that is inside you? So anytime you, anytime you are fighting, the God part in you has been empowered to fight. God is waiting for you to bind. If you bind, he will bind. If you lose, you will lose. You are not yet a warrior. That's why they are fighting you. I pray for you. This very day, the glory in you will fight the battle. I thought you were shouting that amen. You know, when God told Moses... Anyone who see my face shall die. I kept reading, I kept reading, kept reading that scripture. I, if I read the scripture, I look at the scripture and I ask myself, why did Moses, why are you still alive? And why will some of us see God, encounter him and not die? And then the scripture pop up in me that I'm inside you. And anytime you see me, it is the God part in you that saw me. It's deep, eh? Where does God live inside you? Anytime your eyes open to see God, it is the God part inside you that saw God. That's why you cannot die. God is seeing God. That is why God can't kill God. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? But every time we say, we, 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 we have a, when you hear a prophet say, I, I, the Lord appeared to me physically. Hey, na lie, na lie. How can God appear? No man will see God and die. God said, no, yes. Um, it was God in you that opened God to see God. If not, you can't see me. It is a revelation of God inside you. That's why it is no mountain prayer that makes you great. It is the Lord inside you that you took to the mountain. So anytime you go to the mountain, you wanted an environment where you can speak to God. You are not going to meet God on the mountain. You are taking God to the mountain. <laughs> going to the mountain is not wrong. But always, whenever you are going to the mountain, just know you took God to the mountain. Are you ready to pray? My father, fight my battle. 
Give me higher glory. Open your mouth and pray.